The 12 week journey. Number 11. Your purpose comes with a mission. In the scripture study video, The Spirit of the Law Part 1, Tithing, we established that, spiritually speaking, Yah the Father is primarily a farmer, along with Yeshua. This is why the first of his creations among humans, Adam, was given the physical manifestation of that same occupation, which was passed down to Cain, Adam's firstborn son. This is also why we see the farming analogy used so often in Yeshua's parables. The plan of redemption fits neatly into this farming concept as well, as demonstrated by those very parables. But in one farming parable in particular, the parable of the weeds, found in Matthew 13, Yeshua explained, down in verse 38, that the field he referred to, the very field on which the plan of redemption is worked out, represents the world. The world we live in is Yah's working environment. This is where he is laboring, in other words. And this is also where he wants us to labor, once we embark on the mission that accompanies our true purpose. That mission will take us into the world. While praying, Yeshua said of those whom the Father had given him, As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. John 17, verse 18. The word mission comes from a Latin root, missio, which itself is derived from mitere, meaning send. So, embarking on a mission implies that you are being sent somewhere to do something. In this case, Yah is sending his servants, people like you, to those whom he has given to his son, that they too might be awakened to the truth by the word you will impart to them, or through the witness of your actions. Our mission, then, is no different from Yeshua's, who was sent into the same world to reveal to it who his father truly is. And Yeshua cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. John 12, verses 44 to 46. Our mission is no different, only we will reveal the Father by emulating his Son in word, deed, emotion, and even thought. For you are the light of the world. Matthew 5, verse 14. And the thing is, we don't have to be sent very far to be in the world, because we are already in the field of service, whether we are at work, at home, on vacation, or what have you. We are continually surrounded by the world and by worldly people, even those in our family, unless we live in isolation deep in a dense jungle or high atop a formidable mountain. Some feel they need to quit their job and travel to a distant land in order to be in the mission field, not realizing the great work that could be done right in their neighborhood, or at their place of business, or in their own home. And with the advent of technology, the vast world we once occupied has shrunken considerably. But we must understand that since we are continually in the world, we must represent Yah at all times like a lit billboard that advertises a particular brand, be it a product, service, or company. As I have said in other materials, the world has stolen many things from Yah, including the concept of advertising and marketing. Put another way, we are walking advertisements for Yah in his coming kingdom. We are to be perpetual commercials, telling the people we meet how wonderful Yah is and how special his kingdom will be. We are travel agents, salespeople, spokespersons, and realtors for Yah, continually pitching and selling his brand, but not for earthly money. And we are to do so not only in word, but in everything that pours forth from us, down to our facial expressions. The clothes we wear represent who we serve and are actively working for, just as a uniform identifies a fireman or a soldier, or a staff t-shirt a retail clerk. The way we speak represents Yah, not merely in what we say, but the manner in which it is articulated. Even people of the world who represent certain industries and fields speak in ways that identify them as politicians, medical experts, builders, or any number of professions. We too must speak in a certain way and exude a distinct bearing when representing Yah and Yeshua. Being this kind of walking billboard is what is referred to as being a living testimony. Your entire life is to testify of Yah and his son. 
But once you truly believe in the Messiah, you become a living testimony because it will reside within you and therefore emanate from you. Whoever believes in the Son of Elohim has the testimony in himself. 1 John 5 verse 10 Now, as with any company or business, once an employee has been retained and trained for service, he or she must go into the field fully representing that company, as they are uniquely entrusted to do so. Once you sign on to serve Yah, know that you will be used by him. He will call on you specifically to do and say things that no one else will be doing and saying, but you, particularly in your sphere of duty. We saw this with Isaiah's calling. And I heard the voice of Yah saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah 6 verse 8 you may be the only one at your workplace, in your family, or among your acquaintances who thinks, feels, and speaks the way you do, simply because Yah sets his servants apart for their purpose and in order for them to fulfill their mission. Many times, Yah uses separation to set his people apart for their mission and purpose. Abraham had to leave his family and the place where he grew up. Jacob had to leave his mother and father. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. Daniel and his three friends were captives of Babylon and served in the king's court. And Samuel was separated from his family and placed in the care of the priest Eli from his youth. You may have enjoyed this kind of separation from your family, or will in the future, in the process of being set apart for the mission within your purpose. But separation is often part of the plan. Week 11 Your mission should be clear by now, as we all share the same mission in this walk. We are to advertise Yah to the world by emulating His Son, and we do so through our words and actions. But even our thoughts and feelings should praise Yah. With our all, then, like glittering lights and neon signs that tell the world, in the dark of night, who and what they praise, so are we to praise Yah, who Himself said, I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, that they might declare my praise. Isaiah 43, verses 20 to 21. Over the next two weeks, I'm asking you to continue this journey with me. Not a journey to figure out a career path or how to busy yourself and fill your life with meaningless activities. In fact, we'll be seeking to clear out the clutter and pare things down so you can focus on the most important aspect of your life, what it is Yah has truly called you to do in service to Him. Remember that our purpose and our plans must derive from Yah. This 12-week journey will involve listening to this message one week at a time while applying its principles to your life. The 12th part should not be binged in one go, otherwise it defeats the purpose of the journey. If you have already viewed the series one week at a time, then feel free to binge in another viewing. Things to do over the course of the next week. First, listen to this message several times and review its various points. Keep this in mind. You have a singular mission that is at the core of your purpose and you must fulfill it each and every day. Reflect on this verse of the week. Yeshua said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. John 20, verse 21. Ask yourself this question. Will I fulfill my mission in Yah, which is to show the world who He is through my words, actions, feelings, and even my thoughts on a daily basis? <laughs>